A bit like, you know, you're not going to be murdered in the woods, apparently. So somebody or something came down there last night. Okay. This is gusting way more than that. You're supposed to pass this. This is ridiculous. Uh, hello from Guildford, which we start our trip to Eastbourne, really, uh, via Cocking on the South Downs Way. But yeah, it's not all as beautiful as this. I grew up in this area. It's a real mixture of the Surrey vernacular, but it's more. And here we have the jewel in Guildford's crown, the bus station and the friary. Can you please hold your excitement? We're at cooking. It's about two o'clock. I'm going to head off shortly towards South Downs Way. Yeah, it's a very nice place called the Cadence Clubhouse at Cocking. I came here with my dad actually, and I was like, ooh, it's a good place to start a walk from. And I'm going to head in towards Eastbourne, which will probably take me several days. And We'll see how we go. And the weather is a bit <laughs> shite, although it's not raining. Uh, it's going to be three degrees tonight, so we'll see how we go with that. The rest of the you know the week is going to be a lot warmer than that and dry. Hopefully, it seems like the cold snap that's supposed to happen the weekend, if the Met's correct, is not happening. One of the problems you can't really use the poles while you're doing. Selfie stick, yeah, this is a issue of a modern hiking YouTuber, yeah, first world problems. I'm walking away from cocking, I have to have a very nice sandwich. I have gluten free sandwiches there. Just seeing how leaky it is. I took a photograph of the sign saying no wild camping. And so we'll see. I'd rather not be in a field. I might be really waking at like five in the morning by cows or irate. Oi, oh, get off my land. I'd prefer to be in a down or a common land or national trust or something like that. And the Cadence clubhouses, which are mostly about cycling, but they serve walkers as well. And they have gluten-free bread, which is brilliant. And water taps outside. There's another one about five, six miles from here. I might drop into anywhere. CAMP tonight because I didn't really fit any in on the issues around that because people listening I mean we have sheep listening but they weren't blab it's not just a case of you're not supposed to what I'm doing is actually very hard I don't know why I chose such a hard one but because nearest to me, that's somewhere I wanted to walk. People have done it. It's difficult. And the difficulty will be, even though South Downs is a national park, and one of the newest, I think the newest maybe, a lot of land around here is private, even though it's in the park. So it's kind of a weird combination of more. Are they grouse or pheasants? I don't know. They would make a hell of a noise. Arms getting tired from holding it. Oh, it's quite hard to do to do this. Cell phones. I kind of see why people have drones now. <laughs> I don't want to recreate what happened last time. I'm trying to find, trying to find a site after dark is not fun. But I'm glad I got some food and pot food, and coffee. Not cheap though. It's more of a tax. I should have really got charged 
on the phone for those prices. So I will do it again. The tent's up. It's about five o'clock. And I'm only putting this light on because I haven't seen a hollow. I hope they won't attract anyone. I'm on the air graph and down. I've not seen this hole. I've not seen anyone for hours. Not even a dog walker or anything. I'm rather too near the, another track, not the South Downs way, but another track. But I'm in a bowl or a little, I think, I suspect, a, a, a Neolithic, because there's lots of Neolithics around here. Flint quarry. Apart from not owls, hardly any bird life here. I'll show you the dip in the morning. And there's light. Rain sort of place. Truffle oil. Um, olive oil. Truffle olive oil. Yeah, we'll see. That's the view. That was a... Okay night. I had to see the summit. And the base layers on. And the sleeping bag. It was all way, 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 way too hot, and I took it all off, and it was better, but then I got cold, and then I put on a t-shirt, because I was like, well, I need a wicking layer, that helped, and I put it all back on again, well, not, not the Cedar Summit, but it was supposed to be like three degrees, and yes, yeah, it's like a musical band, and it, it wasn't, or if it was, this little dip was a bit insulated. And, you know, it was fine. Yeah, I'm going to take the tent down, everything is packed up. Um, just in case we get the early morning dog walkers. It's about seven, just over seven. And there we are. Let's see we're in this dip. And this is uh, Grafham Down. It's a place called Scrubs, I think I mentioned last night. Whereas now I can just be a early morning hiker that's having some breakfast. I don't know if I can find them, but there was these really scary, I think they're caterpillars, I'm not totally sure. Really big, kind of, like that size or that size, really big furry, what sort of furry black thing, I saw one. A bit, a little bit like some slugs, but they were obviously not slugs. And uh, yeah, they were sort of invading the tent at the night, especially, they seem to be attracted to the light or the, maybe the warmth of the tent, so anyway. Hey, along with the curious deer or whatever it was and I also saw a mouse I think last night or something in my red light and it skipped away vole or something yeah, you can see there look deer track, there's track up there that wasn't me so somebody or something came down there last night okay <laughs> it's the quietness that gets me weirdly the rush of the trees and that's so wonderful. When it's really quiet, mm, that's when I start to like, you hear everything in the forest and it's like, uh, but it's not, yeah, it's fine. It's fine, I'm getting used to it. I see humans, as I say, I'm bothered about. I think that was deer. Yeah, it scuffed at the bottom, so something came down there. Maybe, maybe it was, I heard something like a cat last night. I mean, it wasn't a cat as in like, a domestic cat, I was like, Arr! and he was like, what the hell's that? No, we don't have wild cats here, so. I'm not totally sure what that was about. It just melted onto my bandana. Well, I've got this, the neck gator, and it was too hot, so I was like, oh, I'll use that as a, as a thing, and it's like, hmm, that's the orange plastic. So yeah, I was warned that those plastic lids can sort of melt. <laughs> That's not so great. This is alive. Ugh, though I didn't put enough fuel in the stove, so these were a bit cold. The kind of water is lukewarm, and then yeah. Well, something I found with the alcohol stove is it's very kind of rorty, very hot to begin with, and then it sort of tails off. So quite quickly, especially as the fuel sort of starts to run out, so not when it's run out, but it sort of gets a lot colder, so if you leave food in there, you think, oh, it's still getting hot and cooking, now it quite often it's going cold with it, which is what happened with this. Apart from the strange 
caterpillars, and I thought it, I think it was a slow worm. I don't know enough about all of these pesties to know what they are. I don't want to know much about them. I hope they're in the, they aren't in my rucksack or my tent. I might check out some of this Neolithic chisel, which is coming up. Oh, that looks very silly. Now with, yeah, black with trims of orange plastic. Yeah. It looks like a beautiful day. I knew it was going to be a beautiful day. Um, that's one of the reasons why I rushed out to uh, do this trip. Because I thought it was the last window before Christmas, probably. Before, you know, it starts to get cold. I think people should be allowed to get out to nature. I also think they should be taught to leave no trace and, and take all their crap with them and not, not leave mess. That was part of the problem during the lockdown is a lot of people went out onto Dartmoor and other places. There is taking the piss and there is, you know, leaving barbecues and starting fires and things like that. And then there's this kind of thing where no one knew I was here. I've not seen anyone, no one's gone by. And it's, I think, must be 7.30 or 8. This time, to avoid being spotted, I did it an hour before when the bird song started. That's when I was like, oh, okay, fine. When the birds start singing, we, you know, we exit the tent. That's a good time because it gives you time to get the tent down. And it was still a light enough to see me, I suppose, but it was early enough that people weren't going to be wandering by. And also I'm slow at putting my tent down. I'm really slow. <laughs> I'm not the fastest person. Um, especially, oh, folding up a lanshan. Uh, like the same thing with those silly uh, mattresses. Why don't they put them in a proper stretchy lycra bag or something that, that compresses it down? Why does it have to be in a sort of still nylon bag that doesn't stretch and then the seams are all bulging because you're, you're pushing it in there? It, oh, so that's, that's, that's the only thing I don't like. I describe camping and hiking as putting things in bags, endlessly putting things in bags. It's always like, taking things out of bags, putting things into bags, taking them out of bags, then in bags, and rolling things up. And this is the first time I've ever done this proper hiking, as I call it, because I, I, I used to say I'm a bad hiker because I, I base camp hike, you know, I camp somewhere and then walk around. I don't usually do this. I might do some artwork, actually. I might stop along the way somewhere. But yeah, that's something else I want to do is show you my plein air gear. And I might do a video about that actually, explaining how I do my art hiking. And well, it's weird because this became an end to do that. And then it's become an end to itself. And I'm trying to bring it back in again because the hiking channel took off. And so I started doing more stuff around just hiking and kind of the art stuff got left behind which is a bit sad so I want to bring it back in because that's kind of partly why I'm doing this I have got the gear with me this time I actually remember to bring the paper it's a privilege to not have to worry about your next bit of gear I'm thinking oh well I'm gonna have to sell something to fund that now and I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, are in my boat you know and it's it's a lot of hiking YouTube and a lot of the hiking industry is very much around expecting people to be eternally have the money for this stuff and just charge high prices and it's crap because there's a lot of people like me who like well yeah i'd really love some arrest x um you know nxt yeah i would really love one but i can't spend 250 quid i really would love a dust and x mid but i can't you know there was that big thing on backpacking uk's channel about the Astagir, which I'm still getting promotional stuff from AliExpress keeps pushing it at me. It's like Astagir, Astagir. They're doing a lot of advertising. There was a big kickoff about that. I say, oh, buy the original. It's like, yeah, you know, I don't have 400 quid to spend on a tent. Uh, it was about 100 quid special on Amazon for the Lanchan 2. Then it was 50 quid for the Four Season Inn. Even that was a big ask for me. That was before my economic situation changed. And so um, it meant that actually I probably shouldn't have bought that tent. Anyway, that's enough of that. Just over there is Dima Reserve. And I think that the rest of this is going to be more difficult than this. Bronze Age Barrows, yeah, I knew there was Tumuli and Barrows here. Oh, I might have seen a Dormouse. It looks a bit bigger, big for Dormouse, actually. Bronze Age Earthworks. All kinds of chisel, that's why I was like saying, I was wondering if that was a flint quarry. Seems like Cadence apparently isn't open today. 
um, at Waltham. So this is the view, it's an amazing view. I forgot the advice, which is usually travel cold. You start walking and it's best to do it when you're a bit cold because what happens is you just end up shedding it all. So I might have to put another layer on. I'm a bit, a little bit cold at the moment. We'll see how we go. Mud, obviously, November. You have these little paths going off, which are very useful and leaky. But it's 9.30, maybe getting on for 10. I've not seen a single, so. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> That's why I'm very glad to have my trekking poles in me. Alleviate a lot of stress when it comes to falling over as I fell over on jaunt four. This is one benefit we have of using these poles. These are the the Fit Life poles. Again, not sponsoring me. These are the replacements I got for the crag hoppers. We'll find out on the eighth day whether they are worthy of being better than crag hoppers. Because it was at the eighth to ninth day when when the other ones failed, being pulled out of the pack, and they've been stuck together properly. But these seem to be holding up. They've held up the tent. They've had used them a few times. I used them on the wild camp the first time. Uh. Oh, great. <laughs> I was muddy already, so... It's fine. <laughs> scrub, scrub, scrub. And yes, there's a water tap. This is bizarre. This is the one I actually first came to with my dad. That's why I didn't recognise the other one. But this one is at Waltham, not cocking. There's a map of all their clubhouses. I'm going to head to Amberley. That's interesting, there's no, there's no cadence things until Lillington is really despawn. Interesting there's no water marked on the map between those two. I'm sure we'll find something. best work but yeah you can see what I do I have to wait for this to dry probably had a lovely lunch on top of the hill overlooking Big Nip Villa I don't know what the hill's called I had to talk to a guy called Mark before then he was also a hiker and has a place that was sharing some information how's this from here Apparently we dropped down into Amberley and obviously it's probably smaller. I've worked out I need to go about 10, 12 miles a day to do the time and maybe it'll do more if I feel like it, but if I stop to do artworks, so I have to work out that balance really between the two. And also battery power is going to be a limitation. If I run out of battery power then I'll just probably just you know route marching. Posh Bridge. I thought it was some kind of carbuncle for the local estate, and it turns out a very 
Posh Bridge for Walkers. Nearly at Amberley. Uh, there is actually apparently a bunkhouse at Amberley. I'm very tempted because a lot of the area is like this. Estate farmland. There's, no, there's not many places to hide to wild camp. There's a few little bits, but they're a bit, all a bit too exposed for my liking. So I'm tempted to get to head up up there. I think is where I can see on the map. There's all this sort of an edge. I might try there, and if that fails, either do what I'd rather not do, which is go to a bunkhouse or campsite, or by the path somewhere or by farm because it's not a good idea if it's visible you have to be very very quiet no lights or anything so we'll see more of this please taps taps a free 24 hour open tap And also, we have a station in Amberley. As you can guess from the light, getting a bit worried about time, it's three o'clock. We'll see what we can find. So far, it hasn't been good. So everyone might have been talking about this part. <laughs> it's been difficult, but I still think that edge. Very... It's marked yellow orangey yellow on the, on the OS map. I don't know what that means. It certainly looks like a place that could be possible. This is supposed to be a mile an hour or 10 to 20, depending, depending on who you believe. It's, this is gusting way more than that. Oh dear. Yeah, very long now. The, the Delta ground anchor's working. They're holding fine. The biggest problem I had with this stuff, bramble. I had to clear a lot of that and I'm worried about it ripping my tent. Six forty, and just getting out of dodge because um, earlier than usual because I don't really trust the good burgers of Amberley not to stumble on me with their dogs and then have a go. And also, it is windy, so I want to get the tent down, and not, you know, in the quickest time possible, and uh, find shelter somewhere else. I also have a bad sweat rash and uh, leg pain. So yeah. It's been not a great night. Oh, I did sleep. This is on Rackham Hill. Or would it be on Rackham Hill? Everything else is a bit too near the path and a bit too farmland. It's seven o'clock. It's barely light. And it's like I wasn't even there. I was thinking about leave no trace and how the people who leave a mess and uh, do naughty things and you know and and do leave a trace, but they don't see the good people, so they think that all wild campers just leave a mess. But they don't see the good ones because we're off before they see us. That's the irony of stigmatizing wild camping. The good people, you'd never know they were there because you know, would you know I was there? Yeah, I'd had a bit of a hard night because of the wind, so that wasn't too bad, but I, I knew the tent could take it. Naturally, all of my stakes held, apart from, ironically, one of the delta anchors went. But because I'd securely pegged down all the other stuff, it didn't affect anything. It was sort of, it was snagged up in undergrowth anyway. Next time, try and find somewhere that's a little bit better Though it's not a bad, it wasn't a bad place. As people at Chase Mountains explain, I always go for under trees. You've got the 
leaf canopy to keep you warm. It's warmer there, and you've got some shelter from the elements. It's just a shame it was the wind direction and where it is. It was a little too exposed, even though there's kind of a lot of brush behind. A bit too gusty. We didn't get all of it, but I could hear it in the trees. And I'm a bit worried about the rest of the trip. One app says 40 mile now gusts met just goes ah oh, be fine be fine it's you know 10 15 20 and the other one says 10 meters a second so i don't know which who to trust between met accuweather and carrot i've got no idea who to trust <sighs> certainly if it gets worse than that then i'm bailing And down to a last dribble of water. So, uh, you know, just do what I usually do, which is I dither and stop and take photographs, <laughs> which is what I'm doing now. But you know, that scenery. But I have been sort of remarching here and the you know, torsion. Hoping to get to Chang to be ringed today, and then um, depending on how long that takes, uh, I'll take a view and also whether this biting wind just gets lost. Uh, the gusts, especially on the hills. If that's here to stay, I might bail and and call that a, a day because that's pretty good going. Cocking to Shankton Bridge. So I'd like to make it to Lewes. Lewes, that was kind of my interim point if I wasn't going to be Eastbourne. But according to Google, it would take me nine hours. I obviously stopped a few times, but you know it would be a while before. Yeah, you know, that would be like six o'clock, seven o'clock. Won't get me in time back home to get any dinner. What are those cows doing? We're complaining about the wind, which is a fair comment. So, I better move on, it's getting cold. Yeah, it's so much wind. <laughs> we can get the cow chorus as well. That's too much wind. Yeah, I'm glad to be out of that wind. Yeah, it's clarified. I'm hiking in this weather. You know, I've, I've done cliff walking and. You know, I'm used to a breeze or two, but I don't like camping in this weather. You know, if I find somewhere that's really sheltered, fine, but, but unfortunately, all of the bits I've found so far that you could camp on, Vauban, you know, on the top of hills, coppices on the top of hills, that kind of thing. Yay, a tap. There seems to be one every seven miles. Next one is 7.7 .7 miles at Botolf, which is where I'm heading, so I might bail before then. That's brilliant. I didn't know about the water taps every 7 miles or so. Maybe a, a full sense of security there. I'm still getting a whole load of water, just in case. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still getting 2 litres, in case I change my mind about camping. South Downs Way, it says. And looking at the map, I was like, oh, I... I, you know, there's this big, this is the A226, I think, and, oh, there must be a tunnel. No. You're supposed to cross this. No tunnel, no bridge. Remember that posh bridge at Amberley? Why can't there be a posh bridge here? This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This is a motorway. It should not be the South Downs way crossing a motorway without a tunnel or a bridge. I know in this part of the world they tend to call them A roads, like the A3 was a motorway in anything but name. Avoiding the A24. Well I just haven't avoided the A24. Oh it's the A24. I would have loved to avoid the A24. 
it wasn't obvious how you were supposed to do that. And although you've already 24, you just saw how someone just zoomed through here. It looks like there might have been a different way. Maybe the way that I saw the path going off, but there was no sign, you know, at the OS map and the signs directing you down. And you're having to know about the bridge further up or some other alternate route I didn't know about. There's nothing like having a merry scamper across a motorway. Yeah, I forgot to mention, it's really strange. I asked a guy coming into Washington, coming on the, just coming down the hill, um, whether there was a tap. And he was all dolled up, because I, I wouldn't ask a dog walker this question, because dog walkers, there are a lot of dog walkers along that route, and there are dogs, there's lots of dog shit as well, sadly. When a cow shit you expect, dog shit, like so. Uh, people driving to walk their dogs, which I find really bizarre concept. Uh, as you might have guessed, I'm not a massive fan of drivers and cars. This is the reason why I do these things. It's the reason why I camp. The reason why, because some places are fairly hard to get to without camping or hiking. So that's how I went hiking, really. Just without a car, you can't just drive there. The drivers often have no concept of geography, I find. So this guy was, you know, he's got the, he's got the, he's got the hiking poles. He's got all the gear on. I asked him about the tap, and he said he didn't know. Literally, I was about a mile later, mile and a half later. That's where I hit the very, very visible and signed tap. He'd driven there. Come, not come along the actual South Downs Way, had had come probably from the car park somewhere else or from Washington, and then come another route and not seen that. Because if someone actually was hiking the South Downs Way, they would know that it was there because they would have passed it and gone, oh yeah, there's a tap. So yeah, I think a car hiker. These tunnels here. I'm sure you can't camp in them. But yeah, I'm not really doing urbex, but yeah. Looks like most of them, some of them are blocked up, some aren't. But yeah, I've checked on the map and there's two outs. And given the weather, and it starts to rain as well. It's something else that wasn't in the forecast. But it turns out that there's a bus into Worthing from this one, along the wonderful A24. I said A26, A24. There is a, another out. At a place that's got the South Downs Munch Box or something, or well, yeah, it's a cabin that opened about. I don't know if I'll get there in time, but the by there there's another bus stop going into Shoreham by sea, so probably head for that one. We're on to the the bit I actually really want to do, which is Shankton Bree Ring. I always wanted to visit, and so I'm walking up. It's about well, 1.4 miles from Washington, and a lot of that seems to be uphill, a mile uphill. So, a lot more people, a lot more hikers in this bit. I did actually go into Washington, did a recce on the pub. The pub looks really good. You know, I don't really stop for pub, pub meals, which I can't really afford it, but it's very tempting when you've been camping out for a couple of days. But, at the end of the day, I'm here to walk. Can't really afford it, and it would take me several hours. You know, because the service is never that quick in those places. Always some reason why your tips take half an hour or something. Yes, but with views like this, it needs food. I don't know how many I've done today. It must be at least five. And it's only been a day, but and oh, this pack is killing me. I think I'll be come back here anyway. The landscape's so amazing. But maybe on a day where it's not gusting like 30 miles an hour <laughs> and freezing cold, that might be a good idea. How much check to me ring? There we are, behind me, hopefully. Whoa. See why I don't want to camp in this wind? It's a good job for stabilization. It's actually tilting the camera. It's actually tilting this. 
There's a tilt function. It's so windy. It's tilting it. That's why it's going lopsided. Yeah. I think I made the right call. Not to camp around here. And not to camp. Yeah, this is... This is more like 40. This is more like 40. But that's such an amazing day. <laughs> if this camera doesn't blow away. That's why it's not in my phone. It doesn't matter. The things I do for you lot, well, I'll probably do it anyway, seriously. Maybe there's some shelter inside the ring. That's mad. Now that's mad, isn't it? How calm it is in here. I mean, it's... Those trees shouldn't be enough shelter. No. This place has an interesting history. Neolithic earthwork. Apparently Roman temple. Even someone tried to build something on here and it didn't it didn't last. Several ages of occupation or or religious use. And uh, yeah, I can kind of see why it's a special place. It's nice to be out of the wind. I love Neolithic sites. I love uh, what they stand for, the history, and the old gods. And you know, in another life, I think if I'd been more of a believer, I would be more pagan. A bit too much of an atheist for that. But you know, it's the old gods for me, or none at all. So I feel a sort of kinship with these places. But yeah, I, I'm I'm not. I have, a, I have my moments, but I generally am not interested in jumping at shadows, as I used to call it. But yeah, I wouldn't camp here. Even though you could, or you can't. You can't, officially, but yeah, there is level ground, you could. Um, you might find how much things go bump in the night there. Apparently weather changes are a big thing here as well. Sudden weather changes, mist coming down, rain coming down. There was, when I was walking on the on the chalk track, I was like, oh, please don't get murdered because there was a murder here, unsolved murder on one of the chalk roads of an old man. You know, it's kind of, there's enough spooky stuff, but, so, although I don't ascribe to any of it, I wouldn't test my chances. That scenery. But it's a high likelihood this is all going to go wrong. There is a history of electronic devices not working here.
course it means that it gets Back in the garden, what did I learn from my trip? Well, the reason for the trip was to answer the question, is it possible to wild camp on the South Downs Way? And the answer was yes, though it depends on when and where you choose. The area around Cocking and at Waltham, Grafham Down and that sort of area, loads of choices. You will not see anyone in November. I can't guarantee that the rest of the time but wonderfully quiet i suspect you could actually wild camp there for days moving around and no one would no one would see you it, it was wonderfully quiet and remote whereas the area around amberley or batolf and you know that sort of areas less so more farmland you'd have to camp by the path which i always think is a bit cheesy a bit dangerous if anyone sees you He's more likely to be seen and we do his last resort. And, you know, there was little bits around trying to be ring, little coppices. So, but that leads me to the second point. The weather is random, uh, even if you do your research and you check up on it. They all disagree on wind strength. And it was definitely gusting 40, 50 up in trying to be ring. And as a lot of the places that I could wild camp were on hills it meant a lot of windy flappy nights so i wasn't really looking forward to that and i feel bad for bailing after two or well, three days two nights but it got seriously cold waiting for the bus to shore up by sea which is my out point i was going to record a video in the station but there's loads of people and usual train chaos and everything so i decided that was not a good idea and today it's apparently down to zero and I don't have the kind of gear to go, certainly not sub-zero. You know, depending on place, it could sometimes go lower than that. And my gear is supposed to be for about five. And so I was pushing it at three, I was fine at three. Weirdly on the hill, on Rackham Hill, even with all that wind, I was actually quite warm. So I could probably go a bit lower, but the wind was the problem, the wind strength. And I suppose the other one is do research do some research uh, beforehand. I, I knew about some people saying, you know, don't wild camp on the South Downs Way. I found at least a blog post saying that and a few other people saying that. So I was like, hmm, let's, let's go and test that. Knew there were videos. I think I watched briefly one of them uh, about actually doing it. So I knew some people had done it. So I wasn't breaking virgin territory, but it, it, you know, it was like, can I do it? And also, you know, what, why are people saying don't do this? It wasn't spotted on any of the on any of my camps. Uh, it's perfectly possible. I would say it's more of a autumn, spring, or if you're hardy enough and pick your weather good enough, or, or you have a bivvy or something that doesn't require worrying about the wind. I think summer might be a bit too crowded with people, but you know, maybe I'll test that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back and go from Shoreham, on sea, Botolf, onwards to Eastbourne, because that looks like a great walk. And also the reverse from cocking, so I'll go back to cocking and do the winch just a bit. But I think maybe in bet weather that isn't uh, so windy. <laughs> I, I could cope with the cold, it, but that wind was just like, no, this is pushing what a Lanchan 2 can do. Lanchan 2 is a great tent, but they're not good in high winds. They're not what I'd recommend for high wind. So maybe I might take my little Highlander or something, although it's, a bit, it's heavier, so you know, I don't know. But if that warmer mattress turns up from China and um, maybe, again, I've got something else, a lighter backpack, which is in, you know, in a similar, we haven't got it in stock yet, hell. So I don't know if it'll ever turn up, but if that does, that will also help. Because uh, having the big rucksack may be very visibly hikerish, and which didn't help in places like Amberley. It would be nice to have a backpack that's lighter. Um, that would save some weight, which I can then have with art gear. The other one is make sure you're, you've got your camera or your phone charged up before you start this, because this is the second re-record. I will probably edit from one to the other because the battery ran out. I was walking down the hill towards Botov. I was coming up to the what I call the pig prison, Pig Stalag 17. There's this uh, pig farm there, and it stinks, and also... It's all got these sort of electric fences and the little Nissan hut things. It looks like something from a World War II film, but 
Looks like Animal Farm will start there. Um, yeah, I ran out of battery power, so that wasn't great. Also, I learned there are water taps every six, seven miles, at least in the stretch I was in. Although I couldn't find the Botolf one. There was apparently a, supposed to be a tap. According to the one at Washington, there's supposed to be a tap at Botolf, but I couldn't find it. So a big help. And I could have carried less water. Although, you know, it, it, the problem is, ha is knowing about these things. Obviously, it's not marked on the Orden survey map. And it's not marked on... And I've got a recent, you know, I was using the digital app, which doesn't have a scale, by the way. That was part of the reason why I wasn't sure how long. I think it was too ambitious to try and do cocking in Eastbourne. I did have a flexible end time. I'd set myself for Sunday. You know, that was silly. I don't know why I thought I could do that, but I thought it was 50 miles. It must be more because I, I did about 26, I think, on a one and a half mile detour into Amberley, something like that. I need to kind of try and properly measure it on a map. It's hard to measure. The signs were saying 40 miles to Eastbourne. So, yeah, it would have taken me quite a few extra days. And I could have gone onwards and done that. And that was kind of planning. I think I could have measured the distance a bit better. I mean, I had proprietary earlier out points of Lewis and Falmer, but I looked at Google and it said, oh, you take nine hours to, to walk that. And it's like, well, I can't do that in one day. So I could have, I could have done Lewis. Eastbourne was too much of a push. And also, you know, the weather made that impossible anyway. As my other half was saying, to go for like two day trips, but I wanted to do longer trips, but I think it was too ambitious to try and do cocking to Eastbourne as my first ever long trip. It was just too far. I think it would have been possible with, without that wind. I was having problems with sweat rashes and my shoulder. So I think it was a good thing to stop. It would have been a struggle. So I think I do need to work up to the level I want to go for. So next time, three nights, you know, I think that's, that's, that's wise. I think I was a bit, being a bit over ambitious, but I'm proud of what I did. You know, three days, apparently doing a very hard place to wild camp and, and successfully doing so for two nights. And I think that'll be the last trip of this year, unless the weather gets a bit warmer or something like that. It's gonna, probably gonna get colder. I think in December it's getting colder. I might have a little return to the secret location or something like that before then but otherwise i think i will call it a day until next year I'm supposed to be enjoying it and i don't think i would enjoy sub zero or zero uh, camping at the moment so anyway i hope you enjoyed this i hope you enjoyed this video and like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one